What's going on guys? It's Jay here and welcome to Build School. Today's episode will be centered around a staircase. There are many different types of staircases you can create within Roblox Studio, but today's design choice will be industrial. If you want to see another staircase designs, please let me know in the comments below. I intend to entertain you and give you some inspiration for your next creation within Roblox Studio. Let's get right into it. So for our staircase to work, we need stairs. This is our step one. We are getting the correct dimensions for our player to move on. I'm using a length of eight studs for each individual step. This will give the player some room to move about the staircase, but not too much to where it feels unnatural. After figuring out our dimensions of each step, we move on to the siding of the steps. I'm using a wedge for convenience. Our dimensions of the wedge will likely be different, but that should not matter in the long run. We duplicate the wedge and move it six and a half studs away, leaving a gap in the middle and allowing our steps to have some overhang on each side. After placing our first step, we have a decision to make. We need to decide how far apart we want each step to be. I decided to move the step one and a half studs vertically along the wedges. This leaves a small gap in between the steps, and we duplicate these using Ctrl D to speed up the process. We need a landing for the top of the steps, so we duplicate the board and set the rotation to zero. We then create a part for the base of the landing and duplicate the steps. They are moved one and a half studs as well. After messing around with the lighting for a bit, we need to do something about the wedges that create the sides of our steps. We will be removing the bottom of them by duplicating the wedges, altering the dimensions, and then negating the part. Negating a part and then using the reunion tool will delete the negated section of said part. I ended up extending our negated wedge out further to have the sides get larger and larger as it gets closer to the top. Of course you don't have to do this, but for me I thought it looked nice. I duplicated the wedge and moved it 6.5 studs to the left to line up with the other side. While this looks nice on its own, we do need to create a support beam. Creating a few beams will add to its structural integrity and make it look like it has some support to it. To do this, I created a part and lined it up with the stairs so it would have the exact same rotation. That way, we do not have to create any more unnecessary unions and make a mess with our explorer tab. I sized it to the exact dimension of our sidings. I headed to the properties tab and sized it down so our supporting beam would be placed exactly in the middle of our staircase. It doesn't look great while it's rotated, so I changed the rotation to 0 degrees along all axes. I don't want the supporting beam to look like it's just a block, so we will use the negation tool again. I duplicated our sidings, extended it, and then used the negation tool to create a nice and smooth surface. By the way, to undo a union, click the separate option. This will give you your part and your negated part back. By doing that, you can then resize these parts without creating unnecessary parts. This has been pro tip number one. Save yourself some time. Here I am undoing the union and extending our negated part to give us an empty space below the staircase. This makes it look much better in my opinion and less blocky. Make sure you match up your negations dimensions to your already existing sidings to make it look as smooth as possible. From here we can begin placing more supports. Instead of doing all that work again, simply duplicate your supports. I am moving them four studs and then downwards, lining them up with our sidings. I notice we have overlapping textures. Those are ugly and they can ruin your design. So we will reunion everything together at a later point to remove those. I decided to fill the empty space underneath with some existing models created by my development team. Here's the before shot, and then here's the after shot. Our staircase is really coming together. Now you cannot have a staircase without a railing or a wall of sorts, so that's what we'll be doing now. I sized the part to 0.25 and then centered it within our steps, matching it with the siding. This makes our build look more symmetrical, which makes your build look more professional. Tip number two, playtest and view your build from your player's height. This gives you a much better idea about how large or how small something needs to be. With the height decided, we move the rail supports by one and a half studs, which is the exact same length we used to move the steps. Using the same measurements saves you a lot of time when building, trust me. The supports are in place. Now, we place the actual railing. I decided to have the railing run into the ground, adding to our structure support. This is looking really nice. We have some choices to make though. I did not like the empty space in between each railing support, so I decided to do a cross in between each. I did this by moving the support rail by 0.75 studs, which is half of our 1.5 stud movement from earlier, and then rotated it by 45 degrees. This, again, adds to the support of our structure and fills the empty space. This process takes a bit longer than the other stuff, but it's worth it in the final product. By the way, did you know that only 8.7% of you guys watching are subscribed? Take this time to scroll down and hit that button. Thank you. You will notice that I am ignoring the overlapping textures. Instead of creating a lot of unions, I decided to create one big union at the end. This is convenient for changing the design later. Instead of undoing a lot of unions, you'll simply need to undo one union to access all your parts. You may also notice that I am doing this for only one side of my staircase. 
This is because we will duplicate everything and move it 6.5 studs over, saving ourselves a lot of time. To solve some of our overlapping textures and to give our build a bit more detail, we will be adding a bottom railing that goes along the wedge. This is a kind of hard thing to do because we don't know the exact space in between the wedge and the bottom railing placement. This is a guessing game at this point, so we change our stud size to 0.01 and match it as best we can. When we see no more overlapping textures and no gap, we know we're in the right place. I highlighted our railing and moved it away from the staircase to check for anything we can fix. I noticed that our support rails are sticking out a bit, so I matched those up with the rest of the build. This just makes it look better and saves us a lot of unnecessary union problems. Taking this extra time now saves you a lot of time in the future. Moving back up to the landing, we create a support rail in the middle of the step matching the others. Now we can't just leave the space empty. We need to connect the railing with the landing. But how do we do this? By undoing the union and copy pasting a few necessary parts, we can then line those up and use the negate tool. Using the negation tool allows us to have a smooth angle and match the build and rids us of the overlapping texture issue. Again, playtest your build and make sure the height is where you want it. If you couldn't tell already, this cross is going to be a pain to create. We cannot use our simple 45 degree angle. We also cannot use our 0.75 movement guide as this area has a different dimension. So what do we do? Well, it's entirely your choice. Leaving it blank makes it look neat, but it creates a gap between the landing rail and the stair rail. I decided to take on the challenge of creating the cross design within these unknown dimensions. Using the same method as before, figure out your dimensions and use the properties tab to place your part in the middle of that dimension. Then use a rotation that fits your build. I use a 22.5 degree rotation for the landing cross. The angle one is tricky and doesn't look the best. I ended up using an 11.25 degree angle to match the theme. Sit back and watch my struggle. After feeling comfortable about how our railing looks, we then union it all together to eliminate the overlapping textures. Overall, I am happy with the outcome of this rail. Duplicate it and then move it over to the other side of our staircase. From here, we just add more detail. The staircase is pretty much finished. Anything else you want to add from here is your choice. All I am doing is touching up on each part and making sure everything looks neat. I ended up adding this metal post at the end of the bottom railing. This is just to add some detail and to make it seem as if the bottom railing doesn't end abruptly. It makes it seem as if it's installed into the ground. The last thing we need to do is increase the staircase functionality. The gap in between each stair makes the player's movement feel as if they're bouncing up and down the stairs. To fix this, we are creating an invisible part. To do this, size the part to match the exact dimensions of your build. If you do not match the exact dimensions, the player could float above the stairs, which we obviously do not want. After matching your dimensions, change the object's transparency to 1. This creates a barrier that does not show up physically, but it still interacts with the player. We play test one final time to make sure the player doesn't have any weird movement. Feeling satisfied? We've completed our build. Thank you all so much for watching episode 1 of Build School. We had a good session today. If you have any questions or suggestions, please write them in the comments below. I hope you have a good rest of your day, and I hope to see you guys in the next session of Build School. Stay creative, and take care.